Hey guys, and welcome to Smells Like Teen Angst. I'm Sarah, and I am back again with the amazing Sean from Lost in the Real. Say hello. Yes, hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me back again. Of course, we will be diving into Gossip Girl all season. It'll be us, and we might throw in some other friends to join us uh, throughout the entire fun time. Uh, today, we are going to be diving into Gossip Girl episode two. So this episode is kind of fun and interesting. I actually, I didn't like it as much as the pilot, mm. but I, I'm like rewatching our video. I was like, did I like the pilot? I did. It is just still very hard to not compare. And I think our criticisms are valid. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I would agree. <laughs> okay, good. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> if you disagree with us, please comment. Let us know. We love discussing everything with you and we will, we will chat. Mm -hmm. It will happen if you've ever seen any of our videos. We do. We do. Um, <laughs> like, love Victor. If you haven't watched that, we do. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and this episode starts us with the parent teacher conference that we don't actually get to see. <laughs> A little bit, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Like okay, uh, I, was, I was like, why? Um, yeah, I, no, this was this, this was a weird decision as well for them to yeah. keep that out. Um, something I didn't say in our original our first episode video is I actually do like that we get the teachers are much more involved this time around because mm -hmm. in the original it was very much like the headmaster and the parents, mm -hmm. and now the adults are a little bit more equal. So we do get the teachers, which makes sense since it's the students bullying teachers, and we do get the parents. So I think that's kind of fun. And then we get Donna Murphy later as like the headmaster, which she's amazing. I love her. Spoiler. Yeah, I so I disagree with you a little bit. I think that I I like the addition. I don't think they're doing it right and they haven't really mm. created the right tone with the parents uh which we'll get into definitely in this episode uh yeah. and but then the teachers almost feel like there's like hijinks and shenanigans and it just feels very like hi, like hi, high drama and then the kids are like more subdued and like mm -hmm. have their like little scandals and I, I don't feel like they've found the right balance between the age groups yeah uh, just yet um but I do like that we are getting that yeah, and I I do like the floppy teacher. That's what I call him. Like I don't know his name. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about him. The know. floppy teacher. We're talking about the um, the computer teacher. The computer, the computer teacher. Yeah, I do like him. But once again, no character development. You, but we do feel like he likes the the blonde teacher um, a little bit. Yeah, I think he's a little bit of a crush. Mm -hmm. Just a smidgen. Just a smidgen. He like yeah. brings her stuff, uh, and she like pushes him away. She's like too concerned with what's going on in her life. Right. Like writing, like yeah, if writing a thing, not writing a thing. Um, we do get to meet Audrey's mom. So this time we do get to dive a little bit more into her and her mom, Kiki, who you learn her father left her for her like 20 something old assistant, which mm -hmm. tracks, um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. And now she's got a huge drinking problem and she's played by like the amazing Laura Benanti. So I kind of like that we have now, we're, we're not just focusing on the sisters, we're slowly yeah. starting to trickle into everyone else. And I hope that yeah. pattern continues. Completely. Uh, and that is one thing that I, I wrote down about this episode is thank you for giving us more character development besides the two sisters because we really need that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't know if I love this story or if it's bringing anything different to the table, but at least we're seeing why Audrey is the kind of very confused, self-centered uh, girl that she is. Yeah, and but I don't know if it's justified because in this episode, and uh, we it kind of opens on a big like OMG with Audrey and Max that apparently Audrey and Max have slept together, but just like the parent teacher conference, we don't get to see it. Right. So she had the best sex of her life. She learned all the things that she needs to know to better her own sex life. And we don't see it. Like, did Thomas Doherty put into his contract that he's not doing sex scenes? I'm very confused. Yeah, I am so confused about this. Why would they leave this out? Once again, another thing that the showrunners could have, like, the steamy, the sexy, they could have shown us this. Why just, like, talk about it at, like, you know, like, it was, oh, yeah, we had sex. Like, why? It's Gossip Girl, you know? Like, Gossip that's girl. great. You want it to be steamy. 
<laughs> yeah, I want like that sounds maybe creepy, but I want to see it go down. Right. <laughs> like Max has been set up as this very pansexual, very overtly sexual human being mm -hmm. that everyone is fantasizing about. Show me the fantasy, the fantasy. Right. Exactly. Because she obviously has this, you know, in the first episode, they set it up like Audrey has that, like she has a fascination. She might have a love for Max. Uh, so then for her to have sex and then not show it and then her talk about it like it's nothing like it just didn't work. Yeah. Like, is, is that all they're going to give us with Audrey? Right. Um, because I if that's the case, then it's like it's not enough to. to constitute the way that she treats Aki or mm -hmm. to for us to be even like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Why Aki is still with her. Right. Uh, Cause right now it doesn't make sense why they're together at all. They have no chemistry with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and she treats him like dirt and she's like, I don't just agree with me all the time, you know, like, and yeah. he's just trying to be, you know, the devil's advocate in different situations with her. Um, so I don't know if this is all they're going to give us of character development and her backstory. I don't really like Audrey. Same. Yeah. Same. But then we also have another fun thing with the Audrey, Aki, Max triangle. Sir, do tell. Yes. So I, uh, I am, I, I like this. I think Aki and, uh, and Max definitely have this cute little, uh, thing going on, this sexual attraction and they go to hunt down this teacher, which we will talk about in a second, the whole teacher oh, situation. Uh, but, uh, they go to this bathhouse and, uh, to make the teacher jealous, Max makes, you know, Aki uh, kiss him and obviously Aki enjoys it a little bit too much, uh, which uh, that was probably to Max's liking that he did. Um, but yeah, I think they have, they set that up actually really well in that first episode when they changed in front of each other in the closet. And then now they have this bathhouse scene. Um, I, I do feel like from both of these characters, Audrey and Max, that they're like using Aki and Aki is so nice. And he's like probably the only like good so far, one of the only good people in this show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like uh, there he's being taken advantage of a lot. Uh, but now we definitely know that Aki is struggling with his sexuality, whether he be gay or bi. Uh, we know that that is uh, something that they are uh, bringing up and going to bring up later. Yeah, I'm definitely exploring. I'm all for a sexual exploration character mm -hmm. because it's oh, yeah. still very relatable. You know, mm -hmm. not everyone knows exactly who they are in high school, especially not when you're like 16. Exactly. One thing I do have to say about this bathhouse scene and talking about like them not going far. I'm sorry them like holding the towels in front of their junk so perfectly it like everyone's like walking around that is not how it is in a bathhouse no one is doing that it was so awkward the way that they shot so there's no like nudity or anything and there's like little glimpses here and there but like it was so awkwardly staged yeah all we get is butts we get booty, yeah, we get lots of butts booty 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 rock yeah. everywhere I, I don't like how they did that it made the whole scene feel awkward and not natural yeah, and for his teacher to be really annoyed with Max and his advances, he seems rather comfortable just standing there in front of him without exactly. a towel. Yeah, it, that, definitely. He seems way too comfortable. Yeah, and I really hope that this show does not go the route of shows of our past where we have generations that crosses the line with teachers. We have mm -hmm. a whole show, a teacher that is about crossing the line with teachers. And I feel like if they cross this line and they go this route, all it does is perpetuate the stereotype that gay men don't care about age or person. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is have sex. And I think that's really rude, like really wrong. And it shouldn't I think be it's that. really wrong. I think it would be unfortunate if they do go that route because first of all, we've already seen it done. It's not a story that we need told again. No. Like you said, we saw it in generation, we saw it in a teacher. We already saw it in generation with two men. Now, if we're going that route again, I get that like Max is a little bit older, but but it's still, it, it's a situation. It's not adding, yes, it's adding to the drama, but it's nothing we've seen before. So I don't want it done. I don't want it. It's yeah. perpetuating the stereotype, like you said. So please, showrunners, stay away from that relationship between the teacher and Max. I don't like it. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of teachers, I did not bring this up in the last episode because then I forget. Mm -hmm. uh, part <laughs> of like the Gossip Girl issue and the bullying, right, that is coming from teachers 
you know, my favorite, as I said earlier, my favorite floppy teacher has the funniest moment. Also, like the worst moment is that he takes a photo of the half naked students to post online. So, yeah. so we already have an example from the first episode of Teachers Crossing Lines. And now we have this example in the second episode of Max going into the bathhouse and teachers kind of crossing lines. Like he doesn't even try to cover himself. He's just like, hey, hey. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it really worries me. And I don't yeah. want it to go that way. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Sarah. I think we once again have these teachers crossing lines that they shouldn't. I think it's a tired trope. Um, and But it, they've already set themselves up for this by making the teachers be Gossip Girl. Yeah. So that's another reason why I'd like them to course correct and mm -hmm. maybe show the teachers being Gossip Girl for a little bit, but then having like an anonymous person take it over just so we don't cross too many boundaries with the yeah. teacher student thing. <laughs> but also like it's, it's what we keep saying. It's like, I like it, but I don't. Right. Because that's how I feel about the show in general. I like it, but I don't. I like it, but I don't. <laughs> uh, because also the parts I get the most excited about, because so far I don't really care about any of the characters, mm -hmm. is when the teachers are getting the gossip from everyone yeah. and they're posting it. So I think that's the most exciting part of the show as well. So I'm just like, ugh. I'm torn. I'm lost. I don't. I'm torn. I'm torn and I'm lost too. One thing I do like about this episode is that uh, the teachers, we see that the teachers are being blocked because yes. uh, the students are like reporting uh, the pictures. And that happens, you know, in real life all the time for anyone that's on social media. So I think that that added a natural conflict that made sense mm -hmm. uh, for the Gossip Girl. And we got to see that behind the scenes. So that I really liked that I thought was smart. And I want them to continue creating conflicts that make sense. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 this girl also, as I'm just going to call Kmart K Stu or K Bell. Um, <laughs> wrong yeah, Kmart K Bell. <laughs> Kmart K Bell um, is just really bad at being Gossip Girl. Also, they like yeah. just talk about being Gossip Girl out in the open, like they won't ever get in trouble. Um, yeah. But I've never personally been blocked on social media yet. Mm. Um, <laughs> Knock on wood, baby. Uh, um, but they showed all these blue squares on their profile. Is that yeah. a real thing? For I don't, I mean, not that I know of, like those were the pictures that were flagged. Right. Um, I, I also have not been blocked on social media. Knock on wood. So I wouldn't know for sure, but that's definitely something I'd like to know. Is that how, like, if you're, if a picture is blocked or something, is it a blue screen? Yeah. For anyone who might be watching that has been blocked or had a, a post flagged of some kind, is that what happens? Maybe it's just on your end. I have no idea, but it could just be like the airdrop button. Right. From the first episode. Once again, be... making up technological things that don't exist. Exactly. Can we stop that? Can we just... Yeah you know, anchor it somewhat in reality, mm -hmm. that would be nice. I am still confused once again with the finale of this or the ending of this episode, uh, just as I was in the first episode. So they're trying to set up conflict once again between uh, Zoya and Julian. And Julian uh, basically is like, I'm going to follow. Uh, she's talking with the gossip girl right mm -hmm. and she's like okay and gossip girl sends uh zoya's uh gps or whatever wherever she's at and zoya and otto are at the school supply store right and this is after they have their like not no one can know it's a date date right yeah. so he like buys this really expensive ticket to go to this party and julian's like i thought you weren't gonna be here and she's like well i'm here and then like the dads see each other for the first mm -hmm. time and yeah, and she's very. She's like, I'm gonna work with Gossip Girl to get her out. And it's be like, right. was it even because of that photo? Because I like, doesn't Zoya call her and she's like, nothing happened. I, we just got rained on, and he put yeah. my. And she's like, I totally believe you. It's fine. Yeah. And so why is like, Julian pissed at Zoya again? Because <laughs> Zoya's at the party with her dad, and she didn't tell Julian that she's gonna be at the party. The conflict. Where is it? Why is it happening? It's not making any sense to me. So then she. So then Julian has this whole master plan that she's going to uh, talk, talk with Gossip Girl, get her coordinates, go and then bring the two dads and show that uh, that Zoya and Obi are at the school supply store doing a good deed for students. Right. Why are you going to get them in trouble? <laughs> but she didn't know they were doing a good deed, which I think is kind of hilarious. It is, yeah. You know, she's like, I'm going to show you who she really is. Right. And it's like, what? 
Oh, like, and also Julian <laughs> should be smart enough to know that her two minions are playing her. And right now she's not. And that's, I feel like so much what's, what's going on. And then they roll up and she's, yeah, as you said, at the school supply store and yeah. he's got his black Amex out, you know, the one with no limit. Yeah. And <laughs> if you've never held one of those, they're heavy. Um, <laughs> when you work retail in Orlando, you get them. So <laughs> I digress. So yeah, so like they come together and the dad's like mad, but not mad. The dads are confused. And she's like, I'm a bad person. She tries to cover for her for even being there. And then you've got the teacher taking a photo again, like from the other side of the street. She just happens to always be around. Yeah, this is, I don't know. It's once again with the whiplash uh, with, uh, with Julian, she's like, master plan she's trying to be evil and then she's like oh actually i'm so sorry it's my fault like i don't know i don't understand maybe a little I mean, another. explain it better yeah maybe i did like this scene because once again it shows ob and uh zoya having like this like sweet little thing and you know and julian's like wow like like he was never like that with me julian kind of gives them her blessing in this uh, episode, and I'm like, no one in their right mind no. would ever want their boyfriend to date their sister immediately after they break up, let alone like sometime later. I understand that does happen, right. but right. like, but not sense. immediately like this, especially this character. And I do think though, Julian and sorry, I'm is it Ob or his name is Otto, but they call him Ob. Obi. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I thought. I'm like, I remember Otto and then you're saying Obi. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, it's it's I, both. It's <laughs> both. Obi and Otto. Uh, I don't know why I said that in a British accent, but uh, I, Julian and Otto didn't make sense at all. Uh, and I don't think they had any chemistry. I actually do think that Zoya and him have chemistry and their characters make sense with each other, that they have the whole um, activism in common. Uh, and they show at the end of this episode that the two of them do have some chemistry with each other. So I'm happy that they're going that route, that route but it makes absolutely no sense that Julian would just be like, okay, it's fine. Like that character would never do that. Never. I'm just mm -hmm. like this in what in what world? Because exactly. definitely not ours. I just think that's so strange. I'm glad it's you're a with me on that. Theme already that they've shown in these first two episodes that they don't know what to do with Julian because Julian is constantly is she the malicious bitch, the malicious mean girl, or is she like the sweet? you know, sister of Zoya, you know, like they keep having her be horrible and then backpedaling because it's like, they want us to relate to this character, but then they don't because she's the mean girl. They, I feel like they really need, like, if she's going to be the mean girl, make her go there and make someone else the nice person in this group because her going back and forth wishy-washy isn't doing it for me. Yeah. And everyone loves a villain. Exactly. So just go all in or don't right. do it at all. Like this back and forth whiplash, like my neck hurts from watching her. Seriously. You know, uh, like I just need them to pick a lane. I yeah. agree. Like there, there are plenty of mean girls. Like let's go old school CW with one tree Hill. I don't know if you mm -hmm. watch that show, but Brooke Absolutely. Davis, I love that show. Brooke Davis, ultimate mean girl has yeah. a great story arc. Exactly. Not, like, so like, out of it. Julian could have a story arc like that where she starts out as the mean girl and then, you know, give us a whole season of mean girl, nasty, you know, like go all in with that and then later have her have a redeeming arc, you know. But right now it's like back and forth, back and forth, only within these first two episodes. Yeah. So it's too much. They need to figure out what they're doing with this character. I need clearer conflict and maybe yeah. i blinked because sometimes in some shows if you blink or you look down to take a note you miss something important yeah. so if we missed it let us know what we missed absolutely <laughs> so Please. we could be like oh yeah we did that makes sense i really hope we get to learn more about aki's character because so far we haven't touched on him at all like we've got max with his his own life his own thing and he's got two dads we now mm -hmm. touch on audrey's mom um, we don't really know why Obi is the way that he is or like the money his parents have. We just know like he's the prince of the school, prince of New York or whatever mm -hmm. they've called him. But who is Aki? 
Right. And he's what I think he's one of my favorite characters so far, just because he actually I think I said this before, like he's a, he's he's a sweetheart, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't know anything about his family. We know really all we know, all we get from his character right now is that he's dating Audrey, who's very selfish and self-centered and doesn't want to listen to any of his advice. Mm -hmm. And he also might be attracted to men, but we really don't have anything more to go on with him than yeah. that. And that's unfortunate because I really do like him. Yeah. And as far as Max goes, I need more for him as well. Absolutely. He can't just continue down this overtly sexual character because it doesn't work when it's one noted. And that's where he's at. That's where he was in episode one. This is still where he is in episode two. He hasn't yeah. grown. His dialogue is indifferent. Mm -hmm. And he's still just kind of that guy. Yeah. And I mean, we all, we, we need a care and over sexualite. Well, not we need, but like, <laughs> like we need it. Uh, like, but it's like a character like this. That's kind of like, on the fringe of reality, you know, like going like all in mm -hmm. uh, with the sex and the drugs and this, you know, so it, it makes an interesting character, but we need more, like you said. And like you said, we need more with OB too. Like, okay, he's he's super rich, but he he's like the rich kid with guilt, as they say. Um, but so give us more. I'm waiting for a character to pop out that I like. Yeah. More than just like the idea of who Gossip Girl is. I need more yeah because right now it's very very much so surface level yes it's gossip girl there's gonna be you know this idea of it's a lot of surface level but we need to get into these characters more and i yeah. really like you said i aki is the one person that i can relate to the most but still even him we don't have a backstory we have nothing yeah hopefully we get there and hopefully it continues to grow and get better we're only two episodes deep that's very true like i'm still very optimistic i'm yeah. very excited still to see where this goes oh absolutely so. there's de there's potential here like i said at the uh i think in our last episode that i i think these these young actors even though they're not amazing yet i can see if they gain that chemistry with each mm -hmm. other if they are you know find a way to be different than each other in their acting style and with their backstories everything there is a lot of potential here i just don't think that they've found it necessarily in these these two episodes agreed but we'll see what happens yeah absolutely <laughs> is there anything that we did not touch on that you want to discuss my friend no i think that's it for this episode Awesome. Well then guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you comment along. Let us know what you think. Maybe we're crazy. Do you have a favorite character? Mm -hmm. Let Please me know. Let us, let us know. know. And let us know why. Uh, because I'm dying to have one. I want one. Give me one. Exactly. <laughs> we, we want our favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make sure you subscribe to both our channels, Smells Like Teen Angst, then head on over to Lost in the Real and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. As I said, comment with us and ring the bells on the channel so you don't miss any of our videos until next week. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.